Day two of the athletics here at the San Paolo Stadium at the uh, 60th anniversary of the Summer World University Games. The Universidad is well and truly in play here at the athletics stadium. The decathletes are out on the track ready for two days of grueling athletic competition. These are the tough men of the athletics world. Well, the first of those ten events is the 100 metres then. In this uh, first of two heats, there are 16 men in the competition in total, and they are all trying to inherit the title that was won two years ago in Taipei by Carl Cranston of Australia. Underway then, it's a pretty even start at the moment, but the pole Abramovsky is now moving to the front. He's being chased after by Max Atwell of New Zealand. On this near side is Dobrega, but it's going to be Abramovsky followed by Boo. Atwell and followed by De Brega in that order. Winning time, 10.9. So then the uh, second of the two heats comes up, and it's uh, the man who you'd probably say is the favourite to take the title here, the man from Thailand, then Sinkon. If uh, his PBs stand up to what they are on the start list, then uh, he is better than everybody else. We're away this time, and it's a great start in the middle by the Chinese Gong Qi Wei. The Chinese has it at the moment. He's being chased off, though, by Aaron Booth, and on the inside, Sinkon. But it is the Chinese who has it. As the results uh, confirm, then, uh, Gong 1098, the only man under 11. Booth followed by Sinkon. Second event of the uh, decathlon about to get underway. And uh, after the 100 metres, it is the uh, Polish athlete Rafał Abramowski who leads at the moment. So next up, we have Booth of New Zealand. Now Booth has got a best of 7.22, the 22-year-old. He set that earlier this, earlier in July. Sorry, in June. So a man in form. Yeah, he gets the white flag, so claps his hands. Oh, he's 7.19, so just three centimetres below his personal best. So that's a good first attempt by Booth. So the Australian, Alec Diamond. He's got a best of 7.65, the 21-year-old. Cuts his stride into takeoff. So, 7.52 after 7.03. So, Diamond uh, has the leading jump so far. So, Singon from Thailand. Pressure's on. Well, he's on the board. He gets the white flag. He takes the sweat from his brow because he had two no jumps. So he's still in the competition. He's had two no jumps. Massive pressure. Just about gets out to 728. And the big mover is uh, going to be it's going to be Alex Diamond with his sixth 752 in uh, round two. He was seventh after the uh, 100 meters. The third round of the 10 rounds of the decathlon. So sing on. Had a no throw. He was over 14 metres actually, but got a red flag, so he went out the front of the circle, or fouled it at the front. And he's a big man, strong, and he's got a personal best well over 14 metres, but he's not there yet. Ah! So it looks like he's going to get a mark. He gets the white flag, stayed in that time. Again, very short on that right foot there. But he's strong, he's powerful, and he stood up, clawing back some points here. 1487 for the tie. This is Booth from New Zealand. Ah! 
Well, you could say that looked like a fast arm. It looked like a fast arm. He gets the white flag because the legs stopped working. So he had to throw it with something. So you can just see the hand accelerating out of his neck, but not utilizing the power from the floor. Two centimeter improvement for Booth, 12.96, compared to 12.94 in his first attempt. Abramowski from Poland, second throw. Well, the poles generally technically are fairly tidy. Gets the white flag. It's over 12 meters. They're generally tidy. They do a style of fixed feet throw. So you'll see he gets to the front of the circle and then just drives the hit in against the block, that left leg going into the stop board, and then stops and stands up. And the shot just shoots out of his hand. 12.51. Uh, two meters better than his first one, so you've got to be happy with that. And here we have Alex Diamond, who... Creeping up the board, 13.35 to 13.89. Now he needs over 14 because Songhai, Sanghong of Thailand basically is ahead of him now. So he would have moved out of that leading position he had after two events. Can he do it? Well, he's a big, strong boy, and that's over 14 metres. What a response from the Australian. So Diamond, he's got a best of 15.22, so... I think he would have been disappointed had he not gone over 14 metres, but he knows he's got that. He knows that's probably out towards 15 metres because you feel it as a thrower, you know. 14.91 for the Australian diamond. So that will put him back up the top of the tree. So confirmation then of the men's decathlon after three events so far. Alex Diamond leading, but it's not by much. So then... Just one event left on the track then this evening. I mean, just to comment on the uh, high jump that uh, was the fourth event leading into this final uh, two races that we've got with the men's decathlon. We had four of uh, the decathletes going over two metres, which isn't a bad effort um, in terms of the standards that we've got within the competition. So Atwell from New Zealand and Booth of New Zealand both cleared two metres. And Sing Hong from Th uh, Thailand, he cleared two metres too. And Gong from China, two metres. So that's just uh, a precursor to this first heat of the men's decathlon, 400 metres. So then away we go then, one lap of the track. Is the men further down? Abramovsky there, the pole on the inside is uh, going well at the moment. And also going well as well on the outside is um, Atwell. Atwell has the lead at the moment. Abramovsky is following him behind. And uh, so the New Zealander wins it in 48.36. Rafa Abramovsky was disqualified from that, actually. The man who won the 100 metres has had his decathlon destroyed. So we come to the final event then. And unfortunately, Luca Bernaschina of Switzerland is not starting. He was supposed to be in lane three. They still run according to their personal bests in these events on the first day. So these are the fastest of the 400 metre runners in this decathlon. Sergio Pandiani of Argentina there is on the outside. Inside him is the leader, Sutisak Sinkong, who has had a strange day, to say the least, but he does have the lead. He goes in lane seven. Aaron Booth, third place at the moment, goes in lane five. Alex Diamond of Australia is in lane four. Aaron Booth is in six, excuse me, because uh, Harry Garford Maslin of Great Britain is in five. And Gong Kiwei, the Chinese athlete, is on the inside in lane two. 
lane one not being used. And Boo Diamond uh, has gone off well. Boo two, though, is also moving well down the back straight now as they head there. He's being chased after, though, by Alex Diamond, who came to the fore in the long jump when Sinkong nearly fouled himself out and just about managed to rescue his day with... Uh, a jump that was a half metre easily less than he's capable of. He was very disappointed at the end, but also relieved to still be in the competition. Sing Kong at the moment is in lane seven. He's uh, back there in the white shirt, black shirt, not on the outside though. And Sing Kong is last at the moment. Chance here for the others to make up some ground. Diamond though is also going backwards, which is not helping his call. Booth is coming through. He's going to be the big winner out of this one, I think, for the 400 metres. And Booth looks, and Diamond looks absolutely exhausted as he comes across the line. It's been quite a day. So then, Gong takes it in 49.16. Booth second, 49.77. So then, confirmation there of Susiak Singkong then with 4,082 points, around about 100 points more than the new second place man, Aaron Booth from New Zealand. He's now in the silver medal position, having taken over from Alex Diamond with Max Atwell and Gong Kiwei, all within touching distance of fighting it out for the medals on day two, which will start off with 110 metre hurdles tomorrow morning. So the gladiators start to prepare to commence battle in the men's hammer. And to conclude the first round of this men's hammer final, we have Taylor Campbell from Great Britain. He's got a best of 73.21, and he resides and studies at Loughborough University. Taylor Campbell has got hold of that one. So it's the place to do it, 73.86. He sets a new personal best in the first round to conclude the first round of this men hammer final. And the man that he's uh, approaching, who's done 74.49 in his first attempt, is the Turk, who's in for his second throw now, Baltachi of Turkey. <laughs> Well, the stimulus was, the Brit got close, it fueled the fire, and the 25-year-old Turkish athlete pumps it out to over his best first throw. That's gone out to 75-98. So, Dunarov of Belarus comes into the circle. Well, he's well over 70 metres this time. Has he stayed in? Yep, he gets the white flag. So this man has had a slow... He's a slow burner. He's had a slow start, throwing consistently. You're never happy, though, as a thrower, are you? Never happy, shaking his head as he comes out of the circle. <laughs> So the Barry Ocean, 72.35. Yeah. OK, so that's Rahida of Ukraine, who on his final attempt has thrown... 74-27 to go into several silver medal position. And Campbell now has a bronze medal instead of the silver that he was holding at the commencement of this round. So he needs 74-27 to get the silver back, and he needs 75-98 to win gold. So he's hit the net, so Campbell will be taking the bronze medal with a no-throw. In the final round, Rahida of Ukraine, who's got a best of 76.90 this year, threw close to that with, with 74.27 to snaffle the silver in the last on his last throw. Campbell not quite handling the situation and getting one out there. So this man goes into the circle, knowing that he's got the gold medal from 
the Universiad 2019 in Naples. He's had a great series of throws and again consistently out. That red line is 75-98. He knows he's won gold with the best throwing from any of the competitors here this evening. He's been consistent. And he's nailed the last one, despite the fact he knows that he's won the medal, the gold medal at this point. He's relaxed into it, and it's over 75 metres. 75 metres, 94, just four centimetres less than his best attempt. And he has been a model of consistency this evening to take gold. And we move from the men's hammer that concluded with that gold medal for the Turkish thrower to the women's long jump final. We have Kostina Yusko of Romania. Starting away seven, representing the Czech Republic. And the lady is representing China. The lady is representing China. Fourth to jump will be Ivelisse Tavares de Vega of Portugal. She's in the silver medal position with that leap of 661. And this lady from the Ukraine, Mariana Becca Romanchuk. She's gone 654 in the second, 666 in the fourth, and then that massive leap of 679 in the fifth round. And although she's got the gold medal, I think she's up to go further. It's great conditions down here in the stadium. Shortens the stride and goes longer. Will she get the white flag? Wow, what a jump that was. The shackles were off. She had the opportunity to express herself with no pressure whatsoever. She had the gold medal in her pocket. So, did she take it easy? No, she did not. Look at this attack. And then she just sinks those hips into the final stride. Up she goes. Great height. Great uh, conversion from that horizontal run up into the vertical. Feet out. Good leap into the pit. And we're just waiting for that distance to come. The record, the university record, is with Vailud Kutvich from Belarus from 1985 that record is stabbed so we're just waiting it's not going to get there six meters 84 she finishes with her best jump of the evening and she takes the goal she had it before she took the sixth attempt so what a great performance from the ukrainian in the women's long term so we have the women's discus final that's just about to start the athletes lining up to be introduced to the crowd and there they are so fifth round daisy Osaku into the circle from italy she's got hold of that one. Oh, look at that that's over that red line that's the leading mark of the german Peter, she's been taken over by the Italian. So Daisy Asaku, who has a best of 61.35, has put out a 61.69 throw to take the lead in the fifth round, and that means she'll be the last to throw at the end of this at the end of the sixth round. So great throwing from the Italian. She's in gold medal position now. So. 
We're going into the final round. Sorry, the fifth round. So we have Zaren Kaiti of Lithuania, who was in silver medal position. She's been pushed down to bronze now. She's got a best of 56.02. So this is her fifth round attempt. Well, that's her best throw so far. It's certainly over or around 56 metres on her fifth round, but it's not going to really change her position. She's been pushed down into the bronze medal position so far. So let's see how far that is in the fifth round for... And there we go, 56.75. She retains that bronze medal position with that throw. Now we have Claudine Vita, who was in the lead at the start of this round. She's been overtaken by the Italian, Asaku, at 61.69. So to get it back, she needs to go over 61.69. She throws with intent. Oh, and that's, I think that's just below the Italian's mark. The red line is indicative of the leading throw of the competition so far. So great response from Vita. Fixed feet, delivery. 61.39, and the crowd applaud and clap because she stays in second position. The Lithuanian Lera Zarankati has the opportunity to improve on her bronze medal, but she's got a leap to go in this event because she's on 56.75, and the silver position is with Vita of Germany with 61.41. So can she improve on her bronze medal? Well, it's fallen short of 60 metres, so she'll take the bronze medal. She gets the white flag, so she'll have it measured. It's split the 50 and 60 lines almost halfway across, so it's around 55 metres, very fast across the circle. That fixed feet stop, that block just stops. There's no rotation around that front foot. It just hip strikes, block, let go, and she finishes with 55.01. And now we move to the real business. Vita, Claudine Vita, the hot favorite after the qualifying competition. 61-41, but she's been overtaken by the Italian, Daisy Osaku, in the fifth round, who threw 61-69. She needs more than 61-69 to take gold. Here she goes. Oh, it's long, and it's gone over that red line, which is indicative of the gold medal position at that stage of the competition. There'll be a nervous wait by Vita as she waits for the distance to come up, an even more nervous wait. The Italian has one more throw, so here it goes, into that block style. And 61.52. 61.52, it falls short. So Vita takes the silver. 61.52. So the Italian takes gold and she has a last throw just to seal it with a kiss. Oh, and there you go. That's the way you do it when you know you've won the gold. You hit the cage. So, but it doesn't matter. What a great performance by the Italian. You can see that, the fifth round throw, 61-69. She takes gold in the women's discus throw.